Esperanza are rising, pages 106 through 116. On page 106, I'm beginning beneath the squiggle. When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light, and she heard Mama, Hortensia, and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled café and chorizo. The coffee and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to her, so Esperanza quietly pulled on a long wrinkled shirt and white blouse. She brushed her hair and went to the other room. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table, Hortensia patted her hand. You missed going to the foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all the food come from? asked Esperanza. Josephina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until we can go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama. You and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be picking grapes, and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the sheds. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You are not old enough to work in the sheds, said Mama, and Isabel is not old enough to wash the babies by herself. If you wash the babies, then Josefina can work, and that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job, too, sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they will deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. What's the platform? Esperanza asked. It's the big wooden floor outside in the middle of the camp. Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at her food. She did not want to be stuck in camp with the children. Where's Miguel? she asked. He already left for Bakersfield, with some other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom rubbing her eyes. Mi sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mama as she made un burrito de frioles for lunch and wrapped a soft tortilla filled with pinto beans and paper. She looked different. Was it the long cotton dress and the big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mama, said Esperanza, your hair. Mama's hair ran down her back in a long, single braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mama wear her hair that way. It was always done up in her beautiful plaited bun, or when she was ready for bed, brushed out and flowing. Mama looked shorter and somehow not herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I, I figured out that I can't wear a hat with my hair on top of my head. And this makes more sense, does it not? After all, I'm going to work today, not to a fiesta. Then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The trucks leave at 6.30 to take us to the sheds. Take good care of the babies and stay with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up, hesitantly touching her hair again. When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the fields. Straight ahead across the dirt road were several chinaberry trees and a mulberry tree that provided deep shade over the wooden table. Beyond the road, trees were great fields, still lush. To the right across a grassy field was the main road. A truck piled high with produce drove by, loosing a cloud of debris. After it passed, the sharp smell told her they were onions, the dry outer skins being shredded by the wind. Another truck followed. Again, the smell bit into her senses. It was still early, so the air was cool, but the sun was bright and she knew it would be hot soon. The hens pecked and poked around the front steps. They must have been happy to have been off the train. Esperanza shooed them out of her way as she turned and walked next door. The babies were still in their pajamas. Isabel was struggling to feed Lupe her oatmeal while Pepe crawled on the floor. Splotches of the cereal still stuck to his cheeks. As soon as he saw Esperanza, he reached up for her. Let's clean them up, said Isabel, and then I'll show you the camp. 
First, Isabel took Esperanza to the platform she was to sweep and showed her where their brooms were stored. Then they walked through the rows of cabins, each with a baby on her hip. As they passed open doors, Esperanza could already smell the beans and onions that someone had started simmering for dinner. Women were dragging big metal wash bins beneath the shade trees. A group of young boys kicked a ball up and down the dirt road, stirring up dust. A little girl wearing a man's undershirt as a dress ran up to Isabel and took her hand. This is Sylvia. She is my best friend. Next week, we will go to school together. Sylvia switched around and grabbed Esperanza's free hand. Esperanza looked down at Sylvia's dirty hands. Sylvia grinned up at her, and Esperanza's first thought was to pull her hand away and wash it as soon as possible. Then she remembered Mama's kindness to the peasant girl on the train, and her disappointment in Esperanza. She didn't want Sylvia to start crying if she were to pull away. She looked around at the dusty camp and thought that it must be hard to stay clean in such a place. She squeezed Sylvia's hand and said, I have the best friend too. Her name is Marisol, and she lives in Aguas Calientes. Isabel introduced Esperanza to Irene and Melina, two women who were hanging close to dry on a long line stretched between the cabins and a tree. Irene had long gray hair tied in a tail. Melina didn't look much older than Miguel, and she already had a baby of her own. We heard the story of how you came from Aguas Calientes, said Melina. My husband is from there. He used to work for Senor Rodriguez. Esperanza's face lit up at this news. He knew my father since he was a boy. Do you think your husband knew Marisol, Senor Rodriguez's daughter? Melina laughed. No, no, I'm sure he didn't. He was un campesano, a field servant. He would not know the family. Esperanza felt awkward and didn't mean to make Melina admit that her husband was a servant. But Melina didn't seem bothered and began recalling other farms her husband had worked on in Aguas Calientes. Isabel pulled on Esperanza's arm. We need to change the babies. As they walked back to the cabin, she said they're, they are mother and daughter. They come over and talk and crochet with my mother all the time. How do they know, all know about us already? Isabel raised her hand and made her fingers tap up and down on her thumb as if a mouth were talking. Everyone in camp knows each other's business. Do you know how to change a diaper? asked Esperanza when they got back to the cabin. Certainly, said Isabel. I will change them and you can rinse out the diapers. We need to do some laundry too. Esperanza watched as the young girl laid the babies down one at a time, unpinned their diapers, wiped their bottoms clean, and pinned on fresh diapers. Isabel handed Esperanza the smelly bundles and said, take them to the toilets and dump them. I'll fill the wash tub. Esperanza held them at arm's length and almost ran to the toilets. Several more onion trucks passed by, their smell accosting her eyes and nose as much as the diapers. By the time she got back, Isabel had already filled two wash tubs with water from an outside pipe and was swirling soap around in one of them. A washboard was propped inside. Esperanza went to the wash tub and hesitated staring into the water. Bits of onion skins floated on the surface of the soapy water. She had held the corner of one of the diapers, lightly dipping it in and out of the water, her hand never getting wet. After a few seconds, she gingerly lifted the diaper from the water. Now what? She said. Esperanza, you must scrub them like this. As Isabel walked over, took the diapers, and plunged them into the water up to her elbows. The water quickly became murky. She rubbed the diapers with soap, vigorously scrubbed them back and forth on the washboard, and wrung them out. She then transformed them to the next tub, rinsing and wringing again. Isabel shook out the clean diapers and hung them on a line stretched between the chinaberry and mulberry trees. Then she started on the clothes. Esperanza was amazed. She had never washed anything in her life, and Isabel, who was only eight years old, made it look so easy. Puzzled, Isabel looked at Esperanza. Don't you know how to wash clothes? Well, Hortensia took everything out to the laundry quarters, and the servants, they always... She looked at Isabel and shook her head no. Isabel's eyes got bigger and looked worried. Esperanza, when I go to school next week, you will be here alone with the babies and will have to do the laundry. Esperanza took a deep breath and said weakly, I can learn. And later today, you must sweep the platform. You, you do know how to sweep. Of course, said Esperanza. She had seen people sweep many times, many, many times, she assured herself.
Besides, she was already too embarrassed about the washing to admit anything else to Isabel.